Now, if you watch people like Jay Leno and Harry Metcalf, who are lucky enough to have a whole fleet of cars in their garages, then you'll see from people like that that there are little tips and tricks that you can do to keep your car in good running order, even though you're not using it very much. And what I'm going to do is share with you a few tips and tricks that I've been doing over the years that are really, really inexpensive and simple things you can do to keep your car running throughout the year even though you're mainly storing it in a garage. The first job that I always do or the first thing that I always do when I get a, a change of car is I fit some uh, colour-coded tyre valve caps. Now these are really good, they cost about the price of a cup of coffee so they're very inexpensive, you can get them off Amazon, you can get them off eBay. Uh, there, there is a typical example of the one I use. If you see the video that I uh, made when I first drove this Alfa Romeo, um, the tyre pressure monitoring system did alert me but I was already halfway down the road. So these very inexpensive little uh, colour changing tyre valve caps allow you to have a quick walk around the car and to check that your tyre pressures are correct before you even set off. And what happens is the colour change there, you can see it's now green showing that the um, that the tyres are at the correct pressure. Uh, these probably are the more cheaper end of the market but what we have here is a very inexpensive seat cover for the driver's seat. Now um, yeah, a lot of people might think that this is probably unnecessary uh, but for me I think you'll find that what happens over the time you're getting in and out of the car is you start to create wear marks on the bolsters of the seat. Um, so very simple to do, very inexpensive but it will protect the seats from marks uh, that you'll inevitably get when you're driving the car especially if you're one of those people like me who has a sometimes gets a coffee and uh, drinks it in the car and ends up spilling it all over the seats. Now when I got this Alfa Romeo 4C uh, amazingly I noticed that none of the wheels had locking wheel nuts so I said to the Alfa Romeo dealer that I would like some locking wheel nuts put on them and if necessary I'll be happy to pay for them. Now what was absolutely amazing to me was the dealer made a phone call, came back to me and said I'm really sorry but you can't put locking wheel nuts on this particular car because the wheels are not made to take locking wheel nuts. So uh, basically I, I went and looked on the internet and unsurprisingly within a matter of minutes it soon became apparent that that was incorrect. Um, my local Alfa Romeo dealer actually supplied me with a complete set of official Alfa Romeo locking wheel nuts that are made for this car and cost just £30, UK pounds. So what I'm going to do now is put these locking wheel nuts onto the car because obviously these wheels cost a lot of money and the last thing you want to do is go somewhere to a hotel or whatever and the next day find your car jacked up uh, with all the wheels missing. Just one other point to mention having just uh, put the wheel nuts on, the locking wheel nuts which are now on, is that this car did not come with a uh, wheel brace. So uh, I had to use my own wheel brace that I keep in the garage but uh, the most important tool in the box without a doubt and I believe is vital for keeping these cars running and that is a CTEC charger. It constantly conditions and tests the battery uh, while it's plugged in. You can leave unplugged in for literally days on end, some people do. I tend to just plug it in at the weekend, leave it all weekend, let it top the battery up. When it comes to fitting the CTEC charger, you're obviously connecting it to the battery of the car. Now there is a very important point to show you with the Alfa Romeo that nearly caught me out because on the Alfa Romeo when you lift what you appear to see is the battery here, I don't know whether you can see it, but 
here on the Alpha you can see two terminals, one and two. And initially some people would look at this and think, well, this is basically negative and positive. And that's exactly what I thought it was initially, that one was negative and one was positive. This is, it actually isn't a negative and positive terminal. It's purely only the positive terminal. The negative terminal on this particular car is on the other side. It's here. So there it is. I don't know whether you can see that. So that's the negative terminal, obviously identified by the black cable. So you've got to be really careful. If it's an Alfa Romeo 4C, and I guess it's probably going to be the same with some other of the newer uh, Quadrifoglio type cars as well, that if you're looking at two connectors and they've got red on them, then they're not negative and positive. They're both positive connectors. Uh, one other little tip if you do have a garage is to fit these uh, rubber floor mats. Um, I do find these really useful for help protecting the tyres, stop them getting flat spots, things like that. Not particularly expensive to buy. I do recommend if you're lucky enough to have a garage to put your car in is an oil drip tray. Here I've got quite a, quite a large one and I keep this in the garage so that if the engine does leak, not only does it save the oil pouring out all over the floor, but it also is a quick way of knowing it's leaking because you can look in the drip tray and see the oil. Now one of the thing which is very new and uh, something which I haven't done up until I had my recent Lotus, I'd never really done it before, but I think it is a very very good idea, especially if you've got a car with very expensive paintwork and that is paint protection film. Uh, now this is not a cheap process. Had the car not had paint protection film there's no question I would have done that. I did it on the Lotus and I would have had it done on this Alfa Romeo had the dealer not already done it. It's the last most important thing for protecting your car against gremlins and problems when you come to start it and that is to drive it. Yes, you've got to keep your car running, I recommend at least once a week, ideally, and by just taking it out for a short drive once a week, even if all you do is 10 miles, just to get the engine warm, get the oil going round it, and I also strongly advise that you switch on the air conditioning, switch on the radio, things like that, get all the lights on and off, just get everything in the car switched on and working for a short amount of time to prevent any problems. Um, it's amazing how many people just don't do this. If you've got any other suggestions that are cheap and easy to do to keep your car running, please send them in to me. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna take this little Alfa Romeo 4C out for a run and get the engine warmed up. The other thing you need to do, very important, is keep your car topped up with fuel. And uh, yep, that's one thing we're going to do now.